Welcome to Find Hope in Christ, an online media outreach ministry of New Hope Baptist Church. We're glad you joined with us today, so let's enter our sanctuary for our Sunday morning worship service. Good morning. I'd like for you to stand with us and turn to hymn number 447. 447, Trust and Obey.
Bibles, you can turn with me today in the New Testament to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I have shared these verses of Scripture, been privileged over the years as a pastor to be able to share these verses to families who have departed loved ones. Many times at funerals, many ministers will share these verses of scriptures either as part of the text for uh, the sermon or at least at the cemetery reminding the churches uh, or the families of this great truth that the apostle gave unto the church. I cannot say strongly enough how thankful we are for all the Word of God, but for particularly verses like this. There are things that we must know, Alan. There are things that the church must cling to. There are things in which our very faith and our very purpose of being here hinges upon those truths. And those verses or these verses that are recorded in this chapter certainly is true for all of the church. Chuck, if these verses are not true, we have no reason to be here this morning. None. And the apostle even addresses that earlier in the chapter. Because even in his day, and from that day forward, the resurrection has been debated. Many reject the idea of a resurrection. And certainly they did in the apostles' day even, though they eyewitnessed and though the Old Testament itself certainly taught resurrection. Certainly had examples, as we'll see in a moment, of resurrection. But on three different occasions that we know of, recorded in the Gospels, Jesus rose people, or raised them from the dead. Right before their very eyes. Bruce, I've seen a lot of things in this life. A lot of wonderful things. I understood y'all got to go see y'all grandbaby too, amen. We'll get, that. We'll, we'll get to do that one day. But anyway, we've seen wonderful things in this walk of life. But Mike, I've never seen anybody be raised from the dead that were pronounced dead. Especially dead for four days. But they did. They still doubted the power of the resurrection. If you'll stand with me, please, as we reverence God's Word together in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse, beginning in verse 50, we'll begin to look at these all-important scriptures. The apostle says, Now this I say, brethren, talking to his family, talking to the church, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? <laughs> Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. If I don't say anything else, that's good preaching right there. Listen, he said, we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. Amen. I'm listening for the trumpet. Amen. I've been accused of being hard of hearing. But I'm listening for the trumpet. Amen. And all the world will hear and the Bible proclaims and declares that the trumpet shall sound, and then, church, listen, 
the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be what? Changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. As we look upon these scriptures and we consider what the word of God has said and as we sung that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, how well it goes together with this sermon and that which the Lord has put upon our heart for this Lord's day. As I was thinking about this significant event, and I was thinking about this that was about to take place sometime on God's calendar, sometime in our future, and I believe as a child of God in our near future. Are you with me? In our near future. Our redemption draweth nigh, church. Amen. And I believe that his coming is soon. But as I was thinking about these verses and the significant things that must take place, I couldn't help but be reminded of the world in which we live. The world in which we live. I don't know how much time you spend thinking about it. I don't know how much time you spend making or assessing the society and the world in which you live. I realize that things have changed. I've always, and I've said this for many years, I enjoy talking with folks, especially older folks, and now I'm kind of in that generation now, but I always loved as I, as I grew up and even as a young pastor, I love hearing their story and love hearing their day and how things were in their day. I can look back now that I've joined the 60 Club, amen, and and think about, boy, I've seen a lot of changes over the years, Alan. I've seen a lot of things happen. And we've made a lot of advancements, amen. We have. Things are different today. I don't know necessarily, I thought in my notes and I thought in the sermon I'd say things are easier today. I don't know if they're really any easier today than they've ever been before, amen, but but more modernized. But are we any better? Are we any better? You see, there are things that technology and inventions and advancements just won't fix. Just won't fix. And regardless of the society in which we live, my friends, it's really the same as every society has lived, and that is under the curse. Living under the curse that started all the way back in the beginning. Amen? When sin entered into this world, And we live in this fallen world in which we exist and have existed and always existed since sin entered into the world. And there's nothing but nothing on the face of this earth that can be made or that can be invented that to advance us beyond that curse. The very pandemic church reminds us of that truth. If there were no curse, there'd be no pandemic. Amen? 
If there were no curse, there would be no sickness, no disease. Amen? It's all part of the process. And by the way, I think it's one of the greatest witness opportunities we as a church possess today. A lot of people won't talk to you about Jesus. A lot of people don't want to talk to you about coming to church, but they'll talk about that pandemic. Amen? It's a good conversational piece. Amen? Should I wear a mask? Should I wouldn't wear a mask? Should I be vaccinated? Should I not be vaccinated? Amen? Should I stay home? Should I go out? Amen? They'll talk all about the pandemic. You know, you should be sharing the... I know the cure for the pandemic. You want to talk about pandemic? Let's talk about pandemic. I know the cure for pandemic. I didn't say vaccinated. I said the cure. Amen? Because cure is coming. Amen? Jesus is the answer and Jesus is the remedy, amen, for all sickness, for all disease, and for all troubles and problems. And that day, my friends, is coming as the apostle describes for us in these verses of Scripture. There's coming a day. Eric, there's coming a day when the curse is gone. Amen. There's coming a day when we will no longer live under the realm of the curse that entered this world ever since sin came into this world. Instead of living in an imperfect world, we'll be living in a perfect world. Perfect. Perfect. I sometimes think about that in the perfect kingdom that is to come. The paradise that the Lord has promised unto every believer. But in order for that to be true, in order for that to be true, church, there has to be a resurrection. I want to spend just a moment, and I want to get down to some very basics with you about resurrection. When you hear the word resurrection, be interesting to know the thoughts of people. Oftentimes when I leave a cemetery or leave a grave with a family, I challenge them with the very same thing that Jesus challenged Martha and Mary with when he told them that he was the life, that he was the truth, that he was the resurrection. And he asked both of them sisters, believe us thou this. And both of them had to answer whether or not they truly believed Jesus is the resurrection. I want you to think about resurrection and the power of resurrection for just a moment with me. Because it is an incredible, an incredible truth and an incredible power that the Word of God speaks about. And as I've already said, there were many doubters, many unbelievers. The Sadducees as a whole group did not believe that resurrection was possible. Listen, they asked the question, how can dust be raised to live again? How can that which has been destroyed, that which has deteriorated, that which has decayed, possibly be raised up in some power to ever live again? Are you with me? Whether that tabernacle or that physical body was destroyed by fire or by explosion, or whether it was lost and drowned into the depths of the sea, and many have. How would it be possible for such a bodily resurrection 
to take place. That was the question. And in their educated, if you will, minds, they couldn't come up with an answer that such a thing could be possible. Many in your day, many in our day, still do not truly believe in a resurrection. You have to answer like Martha and Mary had to answer, do you believe? Now, let me say before I get after this, right out the gate, I believe in God. I not only believe in God, I believe that all things are possible with God. Call me crazy, call me fanatic, call me whatever you want to call me, but I believe that with my God, all things are possible and that he can do all things. The valley of the dry bones. Amen. <laughs> you see, the question is a fair question. How in the world can that which is, you know, the Bible says that we're dust and dust we shall return. And how in the world that such a power could make dust come back to life? Well, my friends, the apostle is addressing that very question. When he comes to these verses of scriptures, and he gets down to the very specifics of what must happen. I want you to notice with me in verse 50 very quickly when the apostle says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. You cannot take church you cannot take that which is corrupt and place it in incorruption. Amen? You cannot take that which is perishable and put it into an imperishable kingdom. Right? And so the apostle says, point blank, that flesh and blood cannot Cannot, it's impossible for flesh and blood to inherit the kingdom of God. Now, of course, he's talking about our bodies, our tabernacles. Amen? This body in which we've been given. I don't know that we appreciate that enough. I, I'm, I'm making it a real effort. You know, we really hadn't been together since the new year started. But... I want to complain less because I've realized that the older I get, the more tendency I have to complain. And the reason it makes good sense because the older I get, the more I have to complain about. Amen. I used to spring out of the bed, man, and I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I mean, my hair was in place. I was as good looking as could be. I mean, I just hardly had to stop. I mean, I could, boom, I was out the door. Now I do good to see the door. <laughs> Takes me a little while. Carlene's had to realize, don't mess with him until he gets his coffee. And so... Realizing that there's change taking place, I've made an effort. I'm going to try to complain less. Amen. I've often said, and folks say, how you doing? I said, well, if I was complaining, I'm sinning because I got nothing to complain about. But the apostle says, this old body that we're thankful for, glad God gave it to us. It's ours. It's our, the only one we got. Amen. To live with on this earth. And Paul says, listen, it's not fit or capable of heaven. Amen? It wasn't designed to be. It was never intended to be. Amen? And the reason is, is because it's perishable. It's perishable. It's dying, folks. 
And not only is it done, but it's corrupt. It's corrupt. I know a lot of folks have a hard time seeing themselves as corrupt, but you're corrupt. We all are. We're all sinners saved by the grace of God. Paul is making a great truth. If you take corruption and put it into incorruption somehow, then the incorruption becomes corrupt, right? If you take that which is not perfect and place it in a perfect environment, then the perfect environment is no longer perfect. Amen? You'd mess it up. You and me would, in our physical bodies as flesh and blood, would mess up the perfect environment and paradise in which heaven is. Amen? So, how are we going to get there? How are we going to get there? If they can't exist together, right? And that just makes sense. Can't exist together. Then there's something that has to happen in order for you and I to get there. And the apostle, let me get to after this before we run out of time, but the apostle says in verse 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. <laughs> There's a miracle that has to take place. How many of you have already, in all honesty, say, Preacher, I'm sitting here on this particular Sunday in my pew, and I can testify that I have already seen or experienced the miracle of God. How many? How many? How many witnesses we got? How many? That's a good number. That's a good number. You shouldn't have a hard time believing in miracles. You see, the apostle is talking about the great miracle that has to take place. And he says, listen, uh, there, there has to be a change. Change is coming. Amen? There has to be a change that takes place. And the one thing that is true uh, about every single believer in all the church. Now listen, this is the message only for the church, not for the world. Listen, we shall all be changed. No one going to escape the change. Amen. This miracle is going to take place. And the miracle that Paul gets specific about, and he says, listen, not all shall sleep. Let me, get, let me put that into your thinking real quickly. Amen? Paul is saying, listen, this is going to take place, and many believers are going to be alive and doing well. Amen? When the apostle says, we shall not all sleep, amen, there's going to be some when this great miracle happens and this great resurrection takes place, there's going to be some that are living and doing very well. It could happen right now. Amen? And to those that are alive in the coming of our Lord, to those that are alive in this great event when that trumpet shall sound, they're not going to experience the physical decay that others before us have experienced. But they will be changed. Just because you're alive don't mean you won't be changed. You'll have to be changed. Because you can't go to heaven like you are. So Paul makes this great truth known. And we have evidence of this great truth even in the Old Testament. Let me share this with you, but we have two saints in the Old Testament. Two saints in the Old Testament that according to the Bible never experienced the physical death. You know who they are? Enoch and Elijah. 
And we have record of those. Let me share these verses with you. You don't have to turn in your Bibles, but maybe look them up later on. But in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24, one of my favorite verses, I love what the Word says, just simply says, And Enoch walked with God, or Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Whew. Just walking with God, and whoop, God said, Enough of this. I'm going to bring you right on up here with me. Amen. Slipped him right out. Amen. And then we have Elijah the prophet in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11, where it's a little more descriptive, but the, the Word of God says, It came to pass as they still went, went on, and this was uh, Elisha with him, and says, As they still went on and talked. Now listen, they're going about, they're talking, just like you and I would. Amen. Having conversation. How you doing? Oh, am I? Weather's good? Yeah. Going to go do another miracle down here by the brook. Amen. Going to see the hand of God again. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of plans going on. They're talking in conversation. And behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. <laughs> God said, go get him. Go get him. Bring him up here. I'm going to close with this. Church, you can believe that neither of those two men went up without the change. Amen. Amen. Neither of those two men entered that which is not perishable and that which is incorrupt without experiencing the miracle first. Amen? They got the change. They got the miracle. Amen? And existence still to this day. Amen? To this day. Let me close with verse 53. Verse 53. The apostle writes to the church and says, listen, miracle defined is that this corruptible must put on incorruption. And that which is perishable must be changed to that which is non-perishable or imperishable. That's the miracle. That's the change that is coming. And it's the miracle that every child of God, saved by the grace of God, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, is going to experience when that trumpet sounds. We're going to exit this old fallen world with all its troubles and with all of its sorrows, with all of its pains, and we're going to be taken into that perfect place where there'll be no more suffering, where there'll be no more tears, where there'll be no more pain. Amen? Amen? What a glorious time that's going to be. As they come and get an invitational song ready, I don't want you to fall out on me. I don't want you to fall out on me. I want you to stay with me. Some people, I dare say, some people say, you know, preacher, that's a lot. That's a lot. I'll give you that. I give you that. I've only known this one tabernacle. I know it pretty well. Sometimes I'm broken by it. Sometimes I'm ashamed of it. Sometimes just some of the very thoughts make me quiver. Just as Isaiah said, woe is me. Woe is me. 
But in that miracle and in that moment, this old corruption is going to put on incorruption. This old perishable is going to change to imperishable and I'm going to enjoy all of heaven. Now listen, why do I believe that to be true? Why am I so expecting that to be true? Because I've already experienced the greatest miracle I could experience in this walk of life. In this walk of life. I'm not here today because I wanted to be here. At least in my fallen state. I'm not preaching today because I just woke up one day and said, you know what? It'd be fun to be a preacher. I want to be a preacher. No, I'm not here for that. I'm here because the salvation miracle took place in my heart 40 years ago. Amen. They took an old messed up, drunken, broken life. Saved me by His marvelous grace. Translated me out of darkness into His marvelous light. Now that's a miracle. That's a miracle. I give the Lord some praise. I'm telling you, somebody ought to be shouting, Hallelujah! took me out of a devil's hell and placed me in his son, Christ Jesus. See, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. So don't try to convince me there's no resurrection. Don't try to convince me that this, this miracle is too great for even God. Amen? Because you're not going to get anywhere trying to convince me of that. Because I've already saw the miracle. Amen? As you stand with me all over the church, while we stand and get ready for invitation, amen, all over the church and heads bowed for just a moment, if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, right now would be the time. Today would be the day. Even if you're joining us by social media, just pray a simple prayer. You know, just to be able to confess to Jesus, hey, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I need to be forgiven of all my sins. Just be able to talk to Jesus and say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the life I've lived. I'm sorry for the evil things I've done. I'm sorry for, for, for what I have done and the pain and afflictions that I've caused others. And just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Ask him to forgive you. You know, a lot of people are going to spend all of eternity in hell because they were too proud to ask Jesus to forgive them. Now, isn't that a shame? Isn't that a tragedy? I couldn't think of anything worse. If you ask him, He'll forgive you. He'll forgive you. He promised that he would cast, in no wise cast anyone out. And that includes you. And then thank him. Thank him for dying on that old rugged cross to forgive an old sinner like you. Maybe there's other needs, other prayer requests gathered in the house of the Lord today. We're going to open up the altar to whatever the need might be as we sing. Thank you for joining with us today. We hope this broadcast was a blessing and encouragement to you. We invite you to join each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. for worship service and each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for Bible study. You can join us in person, listen on 100.5 FM, or watch our live streams on Facebook, YouTube, or our church website. Please be sure to like, follow, share, subscribe on Facebook and YouTube so you'll be notified in the future. Also, if you have Roku, Fire, or Apple TV, you can load the BoxCast app, search for New Hope Baptist Church, and look for our Hope is an Anchor logo, and watch our service as well. We also have QR codes, which can be scanned to quickly access some of our sites.